carbon tax rebranding coming because nobody likes the carbon tax because it's asinine. Bank of Canada is in the red by $6 billion and we're missing $2 billion in remittance. So it's an $8 billion total package that we're missing. But um, Andrew Shear goes through the math with, with the woman and the whole the whole holding sounds very suspect. It's very, it sounds very shaky when Andrew Shear goes through it with the woman. There's a lot of questions with regards to how sustainable is it when the interest rates are going to stay high that the Bank of Canada is running deficits right now. And I mean, that's the first time in, in history, I think that the Canada, the Bank of Canada has been in the red. And it's not like, you know, $100 in the red, it's $6 billion in the red. And they were supposed to give back $2 billion at the end of the year. That's usually what happens. They have extra $2 billion. We'll dump that back in the government coffers and then we're all at zero and everybody's fine. And we move forward, right? And not now, right? So, rut row. And she says, oh yeah, we'll get back to, uh, we'll get back to, positivity in a couple of years. Sure. And the big story, Danielle Smith. Oh my goodness. I can't believe she's going to harm trans trans children, right? She is, she is marching them into ovens herself with this policy. Oh my gosh. So the whole left has gone completely insane and they, they are attacking Danielle Smith unendingly because she will, she will bring in these policies and they're claiming they want to make they want to make the case that these policies are harmful that these policies will hurt trans children um, and that they want to find a solution the language they're using is very collaborative but it's nonsense also everybody seems again and i and i said this was going to happen yesterday we're all celebrating the idea that 17 year olds can get um, mutilating their sex organs surgery, Danielle Smith is trying to recruit a a transgender doctor to Alberta so they don't have to send the um, transgender surgeries to Quebec to have that happen. So we're paying for that with tax dollars, which is absolutely crazy. And Danielle Smith seems to be fully on board with it. She said, I believe that it's an adult's choice to change your gender. That's akin to saying, I believe it's an adult's choice whether or not they can fly. And can you fly? I can't fly. That's not possible. It's not a possible thing. What they're selling is falsehood. It is false. And we we should not tolerate that. It is absolutely intolerable for an elected official to, to come out and say, oh yeah, you can definitely, if you're a man, you can become a woman with a straight face. Are you kidding me? No, you've just excluded yourself from being able to hold public office. I don't like what Danielle Smith is doing. I like bits of it. I like that there are protected people like under 15s are not allowed to start hormones. That's better than nothing. But I have serious concerns about the policies that she's rolling out and everybody's pretending like this is some kind of win. I don't see it as a win. So apologies that I don't see it as a win, but I'm not going to, I am not going to deny reality because a politician doesn't understand biology. Okay. You cannot, you can't change your sex. It's not possible. There's not one successful surgery unless you redefine what success looks like, right? What is a woman, a biological, a human biological female? Can a man be made into a woman by surgery? No, the man will never carry a a baby to term, but not all women carry babies to term, right? But the, the idea of womanhood, right, is that's part of that whole thing. So having the capacity to do it is part of womanhood, right? The body parts, the uh, biology to do it, that's part of womanhood. Whether or not you can actually bring that to fruition is a moot point, right? It doesn't matter. But if you have the biology that would make that possible, woman, right? But if you don't, you can't make that. A man can't have that made into him, right? It's not possible. Not we don't have the technology. It is simply not possible. Just like making you fly like Superman. I I don't mean to dwell on this, but I want to be really clear. I don't like what Smith has done. I like that she's protected some people, but I feel like the whole normalization of this thing is, is happening out in the open and we're celebrating it without being critical about it. Like we're not, we're not thinking this through critically. We're, we're trying to celebrate a win when it's, it's not a win. Okay. So every man and his dog is upset at what Danielle Smith has said. This is CPAC. This is the whole Q and A. It's 33 minutes. So it's not bad. She stood there and she did the questions and blah, 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 blah. There, I'll show you a couple of them. Here is Danielle Smith talking about um, 
well, Nadine says this was Danielle Smith's response today when she was asked a question on teachers now having to notify parents. So like I said, I like parts of this. There are parts of this that, yeah, that's great. I'm glad that the kids are being protected. That's wonderful, but it doesn't go far enough. What What's happening is concerning, not a win. But anyway, here is a good part of this. Here we go. I mean, I can already hear the school officials just dreading the paperwork required to opt every single student into every single lesson that touches on sex education, gender identity, and sexual orientation. I mean, some people might predict that teachers would now avoid those lessons to get around that extra work when they're already so busy. So can you explain why making it harder for children to learn about sexual health is a benefit? Hmm. Well, I, I guess if, if, uh, if teachers are indeed talking to kids about sex every single day, every day of the school year, then I guess that this policy has demonstrated why we need to put it in place. But if, as I suspect, uh, there is structured education on structured days, then I don't think it's a hardship for schools to say, this is the day that we're going to be discussing issues of sexuality, sexual orientation, and gender identity. I, it shouldn't be onerous. It actually should be fairly straightforward to be keeping parents in the loop on these issues. Thank you. Right. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Even if somebody did have an issue, I worked in classrooms, in schools, all sorts of things like that. And if a kid has an issue, it wasn't public. It was an issue that the kid had. And oftentimes, like some kids are curious, right? So sometimes they'll ask, like, how come, how come Tommy comes out of class and sees you sometimes? And it's like, well, because he's lucky, kid. See you later, right? Like, it's not, it, it's not for me to say, well, he's questioning his sexuality. Would you like to come and chat about that too? Like, that's, you're, you're not ambulance chasing. You're not shopping for clients, right? Like, you've got, you're there for a job to do. But now they've changed it. Now, they're, now they hold up kids like that as, you know, an example. Like, oh, everybody, we're going to talk. Tommy's now Sally, you know? Like, oh, we all have to do this. Um, again, bending reality to suit their narrative rather than objective reality being real. The Duchess of Al Duchess Lois of Alberta says, when I was mentioned by the Premier, so here's a question and answer, and we'll listen to as much of it as makes sense. Here we go. Thank you. Hi, Colin DeWars from the Canadian Press. Um, you've talked a lot about um, having a non-binary family member. Um, how much did your discussions with them and or other non-binary individuals, youth especially, did that play into this decision and, and how? I've been... Um consulting with members of the tra transgender community since the last time I was in politics. And I, one of the, the constant things that I hear is how difficult it is to get connected with somebody who understands transgender medicine, the need for ongoing hormone therapy, and the con being managing the health conditions that come from being on a lifetime of hormone therapy. Um, I met with Lois Cardinal, who, as you may know, uh, felt that she was rushed into bottom surgery and um, is having consequences of that. And her great frustration is that there hasn't been appropriate medical aftercare for that. And so those are the kind of things that I was struck by is how can we make sure that those who make the choice to go down this pathway to, aff to uh, affirm their new identity have the, the, the physical uh, support that they need through that process, have doctors who are trained in, in, in the type of medicine, have the ability to have those surgeries in province right now. We, uh, we send those individuals to Quebec and we just don't have the same level of ability to do aftercare. And so we want to attract somebody um, into our province, we're working on that right now, who can do the surgeries here so the aftercare can be done here. And we also want to develop a, a registry of doctors who are able to provide this type of treatment long term so that nobody has to guess whether or not their doctor is educated enough to be able to provide them the care. So I would say that I've been very influenced over over many years talking to many individuals in the transgender community and helping to, d to develop that approach. So, do you know, there's somebody, and she mentions Lois here, who is regretting having their genitals mutilated. And she says, you know, we just got to get a doctor who specializes in that here. That's insane. Like, that, that's not great. I, I don't support that. That seems like the wrong response. That seems like lining and then advertising the doctors who will let you transition so at 17 go see this doctor they'll cut off your healthy sex organs and give you hormones kid right like this is a bad this is a bad plan i, I can't stress that enough this is a bad plan and the whole idea is contagious like it's a social contagion like 
Um, there was a movie called The Virgin Suicides, I think it was. And like suicide is a social contagion as well, right? And because people get attention and so on and so forth, people don't understand how final that all is. Um, but this is a social contagion. And Danielle Smith is um, enshrining it, allowing it to be propped up under law, saying that, you know, some people can change their gender. We just have to get the right doctor and the aftercare, blah, blah, blah. I think we are way off in la la land like this is not reality this is fantasy complete fantasy and like everybody wants to believe it they're not thinking critically and even so even danielle smith even though danielle smith is saying all of this and i have great giant concerns everybody is attacking danielle smith this is supposed to be a gotcha and it's a ridiculous gotcha somebody's like isn't your first name marlene so why can't people cut off their genitals and danielle smith is like <laughs> Here's, here's the story on that. My understanding is that your legal first name is Marlena. Why did you Marlena. choose? I wonder why did you choose to go by a different name and why you would take steps to restrict the same freedom uh, for others to do the same. These two things are not analogous. These are not the same. Okay, lady? <laughs> Next question. Well, my mother's going to get a great kick out of that uh, question because I've been, I've been ever since 9-11, I've been telling her how difficult it is that she decided to have me go by my middle name and not my first name. It was my parents' choice to call me Danielle, and it was my parents' choice to put on my birth certificate that Marlena Danielle Smith, they just liked the ring of it better. That's actually what it comes down to. They didn't do the same thing for my older brother. He goes by his first name, not his middle name. My middle sister, she goes by her first name, not her middle name. Um, my two um, other brothers also go by their first name, not their middle name. They just decided to make a, a difference with me. They liked the name Danielle, but they didn't like the ring of Danielle Marlena Smith. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> Parents are so weird, right? Um, but it's, it's something that was really innocuous, and she probably, it doesn't feel bad to her. Like, she's not sensitive about being called marlena she's just like oh i've got to deal with this it's and, and the reporter's smarmy attitude like this gotcha moment like why why would you deny somebody's right to mutilate their bodies when you choose a different name to use than the one your parents gave you um that's different lady like come on <laughs> use your head a little bit please think this through Angus polls, and I don't like Angus Reid. I don't think Reid polls are reliable. I, they use a small sample size in order to garner results that the people who paid for the poll want to garner. Okay, so this I don't make of this what you will, but he posted this, and he says Alberta has decided to move on transgender issues in schools, including notification to and consent from parents on pronoun changes. Yeah, of course. On this issue, our Canada-wide polling from several months ago shows massive support for not notification and about half of parents with kids in school want consent as well. Yep. Well, yeah, obviously, right? So fundamentally, before going into this barrage of attacks on Danielle Smith, which we're about to listen to, um, understand that the majority of the population of Canada don't want their kids being indoctrinated into this transgender stuff um, and having being notified that your child is using different pronouns um, being notified all of that stuff which a lot of the schools do not want to do because they're saying that's dangerous because the parents won't let it happen right um, but that's the whole that's the argument and danielle smith allowing the parents to be notified is what the parents want now listen to this here is uh she seamus o'regan and to give context seamus says Trans identities are valid and beautiful. We live in a world that directs an enormous amount of hate and anger towards so few people fighting for the chance to become. Happy Trans Day visibility. We see you. We value you. And so that was from 2022, at the end of March in 2022. And Seamus says, trans kids aren't supposed to be part of your political strategy. They're not supposed to be lightning rods for fundraisers or rallies. Trans kids are kids. They're human beings. So the irony of Seamus O'Regan using trans kids for his political purposes. But when somebody says, you know, we should probably tell the parents what you're doing to the, these people. Now he attacks and says, you know, that's, that's not for you to fundraise on. They've been using this as a wedge issue for years, years, and like almost decades, right? How long has SOGI been happening in Vancouver? Because it only ha started happening really in Ontario post-2010. So here is Mark Holland. Who's the, he's one of the worst, one of the worst, oh, awful. And son of a bench says, Mark Holland, 
Canadian Minister of Health, responds to yesterday's announcement by Danielle Smith, Premier of Alberta, Holland calling the new policy extremely dangerous, playing politics. So Canada agrees with this policy largely. And again, I have huge concerns. But Holland, Holland says this is dangerous stuff. Daniel Smith introduced some new uh, changes in Alberta that would um, make some changes to transgender kids, um, to sports, to policies in schools. And I want to know, I mean, the government has uh, introduced legislation to protect trans youth in the past. Is there a role? Has your government discussed any type of action on this? Is this something that might fall into a category of withholding health funding, for example? Uh, I'm deeply disturbed. Um, the decision that was made by Alberta places kids at risk. Uh, we know that uh, one, of the, one of the number one reasons why kids take their life uh, is, uh, is problems around sexual identity. Uh, and uh, that the ability to be who you are, you know, uh, is so vitally important. And I, I, I thought we were is so poorly defined by the law. In a place in this country, you know, we voted on C3 and we, were, we, we, we stood unanimously. Um, I, I thought we were in a place in this country where we were moving past this. Um, it's, I, I, I think it's extremely dangerous to, uh, to engage in this kind of thing, which is, I, I think, playing politics um, when you're talking about children's lives. And uh, False equivalency. Right now we're talking about children's lives. Well, no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. This guy is Mark Holland's assistant, I guess, or Trudeau's justice minister, Arif Vereni. Oh, I didn't recognize him. He's the new justice. This guy's the justice minister. I thought he was one of Holland's toadies. Okay. The new justice minister weighs in on this whole thing too. He says, if I could just touch on the Alberta point, I would say also that one needs to reflect on this as a parent. I'm a dad. Mark's a dad. Parents have these conversations all the time with children. They need to be able to have those conversations with children. Sometimes children don't feel empowered to have those conversations. That's a small amount of children around the country, an even smaller amount in Alberta. I think actually targeting that small minority for some political purpose in Alberta, as it seems that the Premier is doing, is not becoming of her office and is in fact actually targeting and perhaps de even demonizing those children. We're not talking about their exploration of their... He invoked being a dad. And then he said targeting those children is bad. And also, like, you don't have conversations about sexuality with your kids every day. If something comes up, you answer their question honestly. You know, how are babies made? Well, this is, you know, mummies and daddies love each other, get together, birds and bees and things like that. Uh, right? You know, you have, you have conversations at the appropriate age level for your children. But, like, are, are, you, are you showing them you know, kink gear or anything like that? Like, no, obviously. Are you telling them that they could change their gender? No, because they can't, because that's false. These guys are drawing false equivalencies and like pearl clutching, like what's her, what's her name? Reverend, Reverend Lovejoy's wife? Like, won't somebody think of the children? And it's insane because they're the ones who've been driving this wedge for a long time. It's not just, it's not a new wedge. Anyway, the justice minister continues. Sexuality, when we're banning kids from a schoolyard or from a playground or from a sports team. That, that looks, that looks, that looks, more targeted and these guys are just making stuff up it is wild uh balsonar i we can't listen to all these because they're all two minutes and they're all just denouncing all this and it's garbage uh cat canada says radical gender theory adherent Ra randy balsano is calling smith's announcement that minors should not be able to access radical trans surgeries a nato moment for the queer community <laughs> i don't even know what that means a nato moment marcy ian um True North is reporting, Minister for Women and Gender Equality and Youth, Marcy Ian, says, I think it bears saying that in Alberta, the Premier welcomed Tucker Carlson and Tucker Carlson espouses far-right views, right? We're, we're, we're not talking about the issue now. We're talking about how dare Tucker Carlson be in, invited and also you don't like trans people. And I mean, the reality is she's on their side. Like she, she's pushing their ideology too. Anyway, um, Tucker Carlson... That's not surprising about Tucker Carlson pushing right views, but it was homophobic and it was anti-trans and it was anti-queer and the premier validated that. And here we are days later with this policy on policy or policies or guidelines that squarely denigrate trans kids and trans youth. Uh, nope, <laughs> but okay. Jagmeet Singh's getting in on this too. He says, I know there are many Albertans watching Danielle Smith's new policy and feeling scared for their future. Huh, there's no doubt that these policies will hurt kids and their families. Nope. It is the lowest kind of pol politics to harm vulnerable people. <laughs> okay. So they're out with the knives out. Rachel Notley, the, um, the former 
leader, current leader, but she's on her way out. So she's a lame duck leader. Wiretap Media, it doesn't matter that she can't do anything and she's just hanging out in the legislature waiting 20 weeks for her replacement to be decided. Um, she's pulling this press conference right now and she says... Well, Wiretap Media says Rachel Wino Notley calls Danielle Smith an extremist because Alberta Premier doesn't want biological men stuffing girls on the basketball court or in the dressing room. Today, in a politically motivated press conference, Alberta's NDP leader Rachel Notley went after Danielle Smith because the Premier banned underage children from mutilating their genitals and put a stop to trans- transgender women from playing in women's sports. The former Premier, who nearly collapsed the oil plat- patch, claims Smith is preaching extreme ideology to save the Conservative Party. Um, do we want, we'll listen to a bit of Not, Notley here, just just a, as a sample of the insanity that we're forced to endure. Here we go. Matthew Black from the Edmonton Journal. Uh, Ms. Notley, I was just curious what you think of the changes to policy around on sports, specifically those banning athletes competing against women. Uh, you know, I... I, I, I'm very troubled uh, by by what they're talking about. You know, there there are complex issues in there, but they have reached in to an area that is uh, broad and complicated around ensuring that 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 a whole range of of uh, medical interventions are managed in a way on a sport by sport basis that ensures competitive um, uh, you know, competitiveness. They've reached in and pulled out one example and lifted it up. Uh, as the dog whistle that this is really meant to be, and and so it's very inconsistent. And let you know, I and and the starting point for me is that a trans woman is a woman, and a trans man is a man, and uh, and and this is uh, an issue that uh, Danielle Smith is uh, pursuing uh, because of extremist politics, not because there's a massive uh, call for it amongst Albertans right now. I can tell you that. Look at these guys nodding along, these these two um, acolytes in the background here. It's incredible. They're just nodding their head. Oh, yeah. Da- yep. Danielle Smith is a extremist politician targeting trans children, right? Uh, Jody Gondek, the mayor of Calgary. Is she Calgary or Edmonton? Calgary. She says the proposed gender identity legislation announced by the provincial governments today is an infringement on human rights, including the rights of trans kids and supportive parents who are who are navigating a difficult journey. A difficult journey. Like, oh, we're we're working on flying today. We're doing flying lessons. Yeah, just off the first sort um, the first level of the house, right? We don't want to go two stories just off the first story because two stories might really hurt if the flying doesn't take the first time, right? So just one story today and, you know, worst case is a broken collarbone. So, and then we can get flying right after they heal up. No problem, right? Like this is, we're, we're encouraging this nonsense. This is insanity. These people are crazy. You can't fly kid. Sorry, man. You're not going to, you're not ever going to be a girl. You're not ever going to be a boy. Like you're just not, you're going to be a mutilated child like you might have a micro penis not so good not so good like trust me not so good right i've heard the stories all these books um but like and so there's a whole thing right and and it is a situation where and if you've medicated yourself and get that outcome like you didn't have to it wasn't like you were born that way it was like somebody convinced you to do the exact wrong thing at a really crucial point in your development and then you're stuck in a situation that you can never rectify. These people can't reach sexual maturity. Like, why would you? Why would you be on the side of this? It seems insane. And Gondek goes on a whole big tweet spree. So I don't really care all that much. She's just going nuts. Faye, what's his face, is saying, um, I don't know. He's he's doing uh, CTV rounds, right? Uh, and. Chev TV says the CBC, CTV, et all, etc., have all paraded men on men pretending to be women to condemn Alberta Premier Danielle Smith. None of them have put on parents who support the parental rights. I wonder why. Yeah, well, I mean, can you imagine, imagine turning on CTV and hearing how dangerous it is by this man dressed up as a woman? Isn't that guy a guy? Yep, sure is. Doesn't look like a woman at all. Nope, sure doesn't. Elon Musk says, when you hear the names of legislation or anything done by the government, it's worth remembering that the group that sent so many people to the guillotine during the French Revolution was called the Committee of Public Safety, not the Cut Off Their Heads Committee. So, right. So the the people pretending, uh, the the people who are doing harm, usually they don't like to advertise it, right? (laughs) Like they'll, they'll say, for your safety, comrade, we have to do this. We have to shut down the economy because, you know, you might get a cold, right? And like, 
Nobody's been held accountable for that. Nobody. That's crazy. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk about housing. I mean, we're not really moving on. All, all of this feels very tightly related to everything else. Like the, the transgender garbage is exactly the same way they would respond to somebody saying, you know, we should stop housing, right? Or, or stop housing. <laughs> yes. Stop housing. Stop doing that. We should stop immigration. We should, we should prioritize housing for Canadians. We should stop bringing people. We should stop allowing people to walk illegally into the country. We should stop accepting refugees. We should stop it. We should stop it. Done. Bam. Done. Well, the wall's gone up. The proverbial wall gone up and we're not bringing anybody else in until we can get a handle on what the heck's happened here because things have happened here. Maxime Bernier was talking about housing and immigration and the impact on the the culture, the impact on the affordability, all of the rest of it, people are noticing. And again, as they attack Daniel Smith, if you say this stuff, Daniel or Daniel Smith, Maxime Bernier has experienced attacks just for stating the, the stone cold truth, man, the stone cold, objective, verifiable truth. And he gets attacked for it regularly, right? Oh, that's very dangerous to say things like that. Oh, yes, very dangerous indeed. It's also true. Maxime Bernier says, we have the highest level of immigration since the 1980s, and we also have the lowest number of available houses and apartments. The link should be obvious, no? But it's only a past few months that the analysts and the media and the political establishment finally began to recognize that there's a link, even though the PPC raised the alarm about it five years ago. Man, can you believe it's been five years? Like really, it's been a long, wild, crazy ride um, every single day, except maybe two. <laughs> Why not support the only party that identifies problems ahead of everyone and has the right policies to solve them before they get out of control? Uh, I think that even if we got the PPC in a strong majority, there would be headwinds at the G7 level people would say, this is a dangerous government. They would treat us like Trump got treated. Like they would try and sideline Canada, even if we were super nice, like we always are. Like, hey guys, we've got lots of oil. We'll, we'll give you a 10% discount just because, you know, we really like you. Um, and they'd be like, this is dangerous. You're, you're destroying the planet. My goodness, 10%, that's, that's illegal. Get them in jail, right? I'm pretty sure the Russians put you up to this. So, right? Like, I think that there'd be headwinds, even if, even if we got what we wanted. Rent prices rose in 2023 as Canada saw lowest vacancy rate since 1988, says the CMHC. So that's, I mean, that's not good, right? Here's Jagmeet Singh. He says, right now, refugees in Toronto are dying on the streets while liberals continue to delay on housing action. It's appalling. Whether you were born here or came here for a better life, you deserve a safe, affordable place to call home. If refugees are dying on the streets and Jagmeet Singh knows about it, first, he should post proof rather than just stay using that as rhetoric. That's almost as bad as, you know, using trans kids as your political wedge issue. <coughs> Liberals. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting that he could, he could just make this claim, like refugees are dying on the Toronto streets. You'd think that'd be news. I haven't seen anything like that. Weird. Where did Jagmeet Singh see it? Do you think he could share a link? I think somebody asked, got a link? <laughs> I like that comment, I think. Um, Hilton Haraway says, so he's just being disingenuous and using these poor people who are coming to Canada for a better life because they listen to the rhetoric of, you know, come to Canada for a better life. And they're ending up on the street on a tent in February. This is not a good, this is not something that's positive. This is not something that should be celebrated. It's not a win for Canada. I'm sorry. It's not, not at all. Not by any kind of stretch of the imagination. Um, okay. Hilton says more international students. So this is in Britain, not in Canada. Sadly, University of Kent has announced plans to axe a number of smaller departments, including philosophy. We perform well on all measures, including student recruitment, but smaller subjects have less clout and are easier to cut. Help us shout our shout out our value to the university they need to hear we are being cut to fund the expansion of subjects that attract more international students but it's not too late to save us oh yes it is yes it is because the culture that the university sits on is in a in a quicksand pit right now right now right and your university is sinking in the quicksand pit but your department's gone buddy your department's gone long gone long gone you just don't realize it yet right Anyway, here is Wall Street Apes, and this guy's an American sheriff, and he said, the other week, I told you that the United Nations was funding illegals crossing the border and giving them cash, gift cards, and access. And then this news report came out, and it says, bombshell report, UN handing out 1.6 billion through NGOs helps give debit cards to illegal immigrants. So it says, yeah, this, this guy's actually 100% right. So here's this sheriff from last week. Here we go. 
Remember about a month ago. I put that video ah, too fast. Every time. Every time, Mark P. There we go. In that when many of these illegals are getting, about a month ago, I put out a video saying that when many of these illegals are getting processed or people claiming asylum, they're getting a cell phone, they're getting a plane ticket across this country, and then even getting gift cards. Some of them even getting cash. Well, the media went to work really fast to try to debunk me and say that I was putting out false information. Verify said it was false information. Well, this is just one of the reports we've seen recently. Now the UN is saying that they were handing out up to $1.6 billion through NGOs to illegal immigrants for things like gift cards and cash. Gift cards like this. We find these all over on the other side of the border and on our side of the border. And we find them with the folks that we pull over and stop that have come into this country illegally. So once again, I'm here to remind you that the information that the mainstream media feeds you is what's false. It's a good rule of thumb to keep in mind, It, right? Like what's going on is crazy. Here is what's going on in France. These are people bringing shopping carts to highway overpasses and then throwing them over in hopes of damaging cars or killing people, really. And that's pretty scary. So invaders, excuse me, uh, refugees who are being brought here at our taxpayer expense don't seem to like in the West, generally, France, England, Canada, United States, they don't seem to like the natives, the Canadians who are currently living here. And they, they are driving up housing prices. And there's a whole bunch of financial pressures that seem to indicate, well, one of them is the fact that the Bank of Canada is at a $6 billion deficit. And the, bank, or the Royal Bank CEO is in Davos talking about how uh, unless we can get the rates down, there's more payment shock coming. So like we've got rates high. We've got people with over leveraged mortgages that will not be able to afford their mortgages if their mortgage rolls into the new rate. And if the rates don't come down, there's going to be people who are like desperate. They can't keep their house type deal. And that's not good. Right. And, um, and, and so there's problems and we're going to look, we're going to see here Christia Freeland, Justin Trudeau, and these people are pretend they're working on solutions. But when we see the interaction between um, Mr. Shear and the Bank of Canada CEO, it's pretty clear that things are more dire than it seems. Okay, here's, a, here's just a quick clip from the, C, the CEO of the Royal Bank talking about um, interest rate shock. Here we go. I tell you exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, I want to finish on housing. I have to say, yeah. I'll speak for Lisa and me. Yeah. When rates went from zero to five, when yeah. we saw rate hiking cycles in places like Canada, the UK, and even Australia, yeah. we were both thinking about what on earth is going to happen to housing markets? Right. Where does that leave the banks? I was thinking about that with regards to Canada as well. What is happening? So there has been a, a payment shock to Canadians. And the difference between Canada and the U.S. is we don't have a 30-year fixed mortgage. We usually have four or five-year terms. So we have a lot of variable rate mortgages at the same time. 20% of our book roughly is variable rate mortgage. So you've seen a payment shock to about 30% of Canadians right now in the tune of 20 to 25% increase a month, four or $500 a month increase. So that's been challenging for Canadians. What it does is it slows the economy much more quickly. Unlike the U.S. where there is no payment shock really unless you break your mortgage or sell your house. So the U.S. economy struggled to slow the consumer. The Canadian economy has slowed the consumer quite significantly. And we've seen that in the credit card business. People have a mortgage. People have a variable rate mortgage. Yeah, you see, I mean, you see that everywhere, right? There's all sorts of things. Uh, but problems are on the horizon.